All right, everybody got their recorders and blackberries going? <coughs> Mr. Feller, fire away. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> I, had a few I didn't mean to get yours out, Chip, for goodness sake. I thought you were going to do this, by the way. Yeah, no, I, uh, I still don't have mine up here. About the uh, sinking of the South Korean naval ship, can you tell us what steps the White House is considering against North Korea, if any, in defense of its ally? Well, uh, let me uh, first just talk broadly. Uh, we uh, have, were involved in and have carefully reviewed uh, the results of the international investigation. Um, as I said in a statement last evening, the report is an objective and scientific evaluation uh, of the evidence uh, that po points overwhelmingly to the conclusion uh, that the ship was sunk by a North Korean torpedo. Um, obviously, we strongly condemn uh, this act of aggression um, against the Republic of Korea uh, and send our condolences to those uh, families of the 46 sailors that lost their lives. Um, obviously, we are, uh, we have uh, and enjoy an extremely strong and close relationship with the Republic of Korea. Uh, and we are in consultation with them uh, as they contemplate their next steps. What about the, the White House's next steps? Well, again, we're, we're, uh, uh, we're in consultation directly with the South Koreans as, uh, as they make their next set of decisions. Is, it, um, is the next step something that the United States preference would be, would, uh, would be an international one or something? That well, look, I think that uh, in addition to the South Koreans we've been in touch with, uh, neighboring countries. We've been in touch with uh, uh, bodies of the international community, and uh, I, I would, you know, I'd say that uh, you know, North Korea is a country that has, because of its actions over the past many years, isolated itself even further from the international community. That's what resulted in um, a very strong set of sanctions uh, last year. And uh, I think these, this act of aggression, this um, uh, clear violation of uh, the armistice agreement uh, further sets them back uh, and further isolates them. Do you think it's fair to say in some form or fashion that there will be consequences? Well, I think, I'll be honest with you, Ben, I think there are consequences already for the North Koreans. Uh, again, they're further isolated from uh, from the international community based on the steps that they've taken to isolate themselves. And just one more on this, to put this in perspective, North Korea is, North Korea is saying uh, any re retaliation would mean, quote, all-out war. Um, I just want to frame this right away. Does the president have any real concern that this could actually lead to war? Well, again, I, I'm, I don't want to get into a series of hypotheticals except to, to, to reiterate the, uh, our strong consultation as, as part of the involvement in this investigation as well as uh, uh, in uh, discussions with the South Koreans about what's next. Well, well, okay. Sorry, I have a what, is, what is isolation? isolation? What's the definition of isolation? Well, I, they, uh, well uh, the, <coughs> the actions that they've taken have led them uh, to uh, led them to the point in which they don't share uh, a very healthy relationship with virtually everybody in their region. Uh, they have watched the international community align against the actions that they've taken as it res uh, relates to their nuclear program, uh, ballistic missiles, uh, and now these actions. I, I, think, uh, um, I think the quality of life of their citizens demonstrates that the actions that they've taken have isolated them from the world community. Yes, ma'am. Of the next steps, Japan has said it would back a UN resolution. Is that in the works? Is that something the United States would be willing to take? Again, we're in consultation with a with a with a host of different entities, in, including uh, the Security Council and the UN, uh, and working closely with uh, with the South Koreans. Does that mean it's a possibility? Uh, look, I I think there's a lot of things that are on the table. And I know you don't want to get into hypotheticals, but has South Korea given the United States any assurances that they won't take military action? I, I'm not going to get into the private discussions that the two countries have had, except to say they're in close consultation. Yes, sir. Can you uh, shed some light on the announcement, or not the announcement, the uh, direction from the EPA to BP yesterday? Uh, well, uh, look, we, uh, 
uh, I think first and foremost, we are, um, we are seeing uh, as a result of the scope and the size of uh, the spill in the Gulf, um, we have seen a, a large quantity of dispersants used primarily uh, on the surface, some underneath the sea. Uh, monitoring and testing has continued to take place uh, during that. Uh, but as we move forward, the EPA believed uh, best to use the least toxic um, dispersant. Uh, again, as we, uh, as we are into, um, uh, well into the fourth week of, uh, of what has happened in the Gulf, uh, even as we continue to monitor uh, air and water quality, uh, we have asked and are, are asking BP to um, be transparent about the measurements that it is taking as it relates to air and water quality, and, and we'll be asking them to uh, more publicly provide, uh, as I talked about uh, last week, um, the video that they uh, may have uh, of of the, the structure uh, on the floor of the sea. Uh, this is, uh, uh, again, even as EPA continues to, to monitor uh, the area. But uh, BP was telling the public that the dispersant they were using was essentially soap suds. Uh, my understanding is that, that the dispersant is actually not used in several Western countries because of its toxicity. Should they have been using a different dispersant from the beginning? Um, well, again, I, I think the dispersant that they're using uh, is, uh, is part of a broader list of approved uh, dispersants. Uh, our feeling and the EPA's feeling is, given the extent to which they are, we are having to continue to use them, uh, that to use the least toxic of those makes the most sense. And just a follow-up on the election uh, victory of uh, <coughs> Joe Sestak um, the other night. First of all, this makes four candidates that President Obama has endorsed. Uh, Deeds, Corzine, Copley, and Specter uh, that have lost. Oh, he's 0 for 4 uh, in terms of his campaigning for candidates. <coughs> Is that a concern at all of this administration, of the, of the president, of the political no. operation? No. And Sestak, um, several months ago, I asked you on February 23rd if you could find out more about what Sestak said about um, the White House making him an offer mm -hmm. uh, to not run. And I, I know that in March you said uh, whatever conversations have been had are not problematic, but I'm wondering since this has become an issue in uh, Congressman Sestak's campaign and will likely be uh, continue to be an issue if you could, if you want to put it to rest right now. What exactly was the conversation? Dick, I, I don't have anything to add to what I said in March. But you never, you never really explained what the conversation uh, was. And I don't have anything to add today. But if the White House offers a congressman a position in the administration in order to convince that congressman to not run for office. Dick, I, I don't have anything to add to that. And you said a number of times that you would get something more. On that. Well, and, and I did, and I, I gave that answer in March, and I don't have anything to add to that. But do you really think the American people don't have a right to know about what exactly the conversation I, I, was? I, Jake, I don't have anything to add to what I said in March. Can I ask a quick follow on that? Because <coughs> yesterday, Congressman Sestak was on CNN and said, in fact, that he was offered something. He wouldn't say more, but he said he was offered a job. Would you deny that? And I don't have, I, I, but, but I wouldn't give you, I, I don't have anything to add to what Jake asked me. Or so you can't rule out their job was off. I, I don't have anything to add to what I said anymore. Okay, is that because the council's office said said to Robert? No. Other advice to the council? No. Could you could you seek more information? I, I don't have anything to add to I what I said. Can you define, but, can but you define why problematic? You, it sounds like you're saying you don't I, you I have no interest in getting it. I'm just referring to what I said in March. But what does yeah. problematic mean? Go ahead. Can I ask on BP, um, uh, when you answered Jake, you said we are asking BP to be more transparent about air quality, mm -hmm. about how much oil is spilling out. Asking is a lot different than what the Interior Secretary said this morning, and you've said before from this podium that um, we've got the boot on the throats of BP. Well, I, asking I, them for it. Why well, are you not demanding it? I, 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 it's just a, a it's, I, I will provide you with the letter that will soon go out, which uh, pursuant to the Clean Water Act, uh, we are asking for them to provide the data, put it on a website, update that website, website daily, 
provide whatever access they have to video uh, to both uh, fully to the government and to the public. Uh, we think that is uh, uh, we think that is what um, the company uh, owes again both us and the American people uh, as we work through our response uh, and as the public has questions about their operations. I, I, I will say I, I, my, my guess, Ed, would be um, uh, that they're not going to want to, they're, they're not going to want to hide that data that they'll, uh, based on this letter, provide it. Yeah, this video you've been talking about, you've been asking for, the media's been asking for it for days. They, they've released a small one, I think, but there's a lot more that you want. Which so is why, why, why does asked, that give you, the, which is why, why does it give them any credibility that they're going to turn it over? Uh, and I, I, I think they will respond favorably to this letter. Okay, this morning, the spokesman for BP, uh, Mark Probler, uh, said that he now believes that it's actually spilling more than 5,000 barrels a day. Mm -hmm. uh, but he couldn't say exactly how much. Mm -hmm. And I think this gets back to the point these oceanographers were on the Hill testifying yesterday mm -hmm. saying, that this government, the Obama administration, should be doing more to demand of the company this data and how much is really well, spilling out and how four weeks yeah, later that's, could you that's, not know. That's why the letter, that's, that's one of the reasons the letter uh, is going, is to find out more information. I do you really I, think a letter is going to force and, the company? I mean, that doesn't let me, sound let very me, tough. Uh, well, do, do you have a better idea? You say you've got I, a boot on the throat. <laughs> maybe we could do, maybe we could, maybe, a maybe a story on CNN. Ed, let me, let me, let me, do, I think you heard the president say in the Rose Garden last Friday that uh, I'm, I'm not sure it is, I'm sure there are many different estimates. NOAA is uh, conducting testing through many different research vehicles on the degree to which, and we now have uh, evidence to believe that likely there is oil uh, in the beginning of the loop current. Uh, so we're trying to find out the degree to which uh, more of that will go into the loop current. Uh, how much? Uh, there's testing that's going on to determine uh, the size and scope of uh, underwater oil. Uh, and there is, th th we are having, there's a group of people that are looking at the flow. Uh, it is, Ed, hard. It is, you're talking about an incident that is uh, 5,000 feet below the surface of the sea for a well that is an additional four miles below that one mile surface. It is, it is as that Allen said, uh, the first response that he has had to deal with at this level in 30 years, and I would mention this, Thad Allen was supposed to retire. He is not. He has agreed to stay on as the National Incident Com uh, Coordinator, uh, even as a new head of the Coast Guard will come and focus on those duties. But Thad Allen said that in 30 years he's never been a part of one of these things that you couldn't see. Uh, so look, there's, uh, there, are, there are people that are trying to figure out the best, uh, to the best of their ability, the degree to which there's uh, the, the flow, the rate of the leak, the size of a plume, uh, continued air and water quality testing for um, what oil is leaking in, what the effect of the dispersants are, just the, as the EPA has always been testing air and water quality standards around um, the local burns. First and foremost, we're doing everything we can to try to stop that leak. Very last thing is the CEO uh, of BP, uh, Tony Hayward, said at the beginning of this he would not leave the country until this, this was fully dealt with. Um, and CNN was reporting last night that he's now leaving the country, he's planning to attend a board meeting in Europe, and there are even allegations he's going to some sort of a birthday party. Is, is the administration going to stop him from leaving the scene of this? I, 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 would, have to, I, I, I would have to get some more information on this. And I, I don't, uh, 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 I, I can't answer where the CEO believes, uh, based on the headquarters being in Britain, whether he needs to be sure, in Britain. Sure, but when you say you've got the boot on the throat, I know it's not literal, but how, how are you, <laughs> what are you really doing? I mean, I got it seems like he's leaving. And I don't, I don't, well, uh, let's not oversimplify the fact that we think that somehow the CEO is controlling the robot that's going to stop. I mean, I, I, there's, I, I'm not a spokesperson for BP, so if you, if you have a question for the activities of BP, there's there are many well-paid so spokespeople. No, no, I, I just don't, I, and I, I, I just think that uh, the notion that if, again, I don't know that the CEO of BP being on a ship somewhere in the Gulf is going to make um, a, a whole lot of difference. 
Um, on the uh, amount of oil coming out, yeah. obviously it was 5,000 barrels a day. That was the long-term estimate. Now BP says they are siphoning off right. 5,000 barrels a day, but it is still gushing out. What is the administration's estimate? I, I, I don't have an updated estimate. I, I don't. I, I don't. I, again, there there are people that are are looking at that. I assume. Quite frankly, uh, there may be different estimates at different times. Do they believe it is dramatically more than 5,000 barrels a day? Our, um, as, as Thad Allen said, our response is not predicated off of the flow. It is predicated off of the notion that you have a catastrophic event. And that catastrophic event has um, created a response uh, on land and on sea uh, to deal with whatever we face. So uh, there are certainly uh, many reasons to find out the degree to which that flow is happening. Um, it has not in though in any way chip impeded or curtailed the response uh, that we've deployed. There's not a, hey, there's a thousand barrel a day response. Now it's five, get this notebook out and check. There's, it's always been a catastrophic response. And I think if you look at the updated sheet that goes out each night about the level of the response, uh, you can see that it is met to deploy uh, something of this size. Understanding, Chip, we have, uh, to the best of my ability, not, um, not faced, uh, certainly the Valdez was a, uh, a larger spill, um, th but again, a, a little bit different because one, it's a different environment, and two, a different process where there's a fixed quantity. Uh, this, is, uh, this is unique and unprecedented. There are some scientists who believe it could be two to three million gallons a day coming out of there. Uh, it, it, is that a possibility in the eyes of the administration? If so, I don't know how many, well, what does that translate that to in barrels? In barrels, uh, darn good question. Anybody have a calculator? But, but it, <laughs> On your would, it would dwarf the Valdez. Uh, if that is true. Two to three million Ga gallons a day. For how long? There's 11 Since the beginning. Already. Since it's the a, beginning. It's a, Continuously. A, 11, if, if I, is, I, I, I have some figures on my desk. Yeah, I, I th every two or three days. Yeah, is that, okay. Exactly. I, 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 uh, Let's not have a room full of humanities majors. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. I, thank you for the, uh, the mathematical admonition, which I think is well taken. I, I, you know, again, Chip, I don't, uh, uh, I don't have an updated estimate. Um, I would say one of the reasons that we continue to do monitoring, NOAA continues to do monitoring of both at a, uh, and, and satellite pictures that are taken at a surface level and testing that's done at a subsea level uh, is to try as best as we can to understand uh, just how big this is. I, I, an Exxon Valdez every two days, I, I'm not a scientist on this, but I, my rough exactly. belief is. I, I, I hate to venture into math, but I think it's actually every three to four days because that was a. Okay. A but I, I do think, again, and I'm not, I, I, I'm way out of my technical depth, um, but my sense is that you would see far more of that on the surface um, if that were, uh, if, if we were looking at, I mean, as I recall, the, the Exxon Valdez was um, uh, several million barrels. Uh, of oil in, in one event, that would be, um, uh, again, my, my hunch is you'd see just a lot more of that on the surface than you do right now. Um, it, well, in fact, that's one of the other issues that's going on here. Some scientists believe that the reason BP is so big on the idea of using dispersants, well, first of all, they say they believe that the oil can do just as much damage below the surface as it can do above the surface. Well, but, the, but after being, even after being dispersed, they say the real reason BP wants to use dispersants is so the public doesn't see it, so the TV cameras don't see it. Is the, has the administration looked into that argument, or are they fully on well, board with the again, use of dispersants? Uh, well, we have uh, worked with BP in terms of, again, the water quality and subsea testing of the subsea dispersants, which, um, when we first started this process, had not to the degree to which we're doing it been tried. Uh, at that depth, there also <laughs> is, um, uh, there's, there are natural processes that deal with uh, some amount of oil. I'm not suggesting that if it was doing, uh, if the rate was uh, exponentially higher that all of that could happen. Obviously, there's, on the surface, there's some evaporation that takes place in terms of 
of, of some of that oil as well. So um, uh, I, I, I do not believe, uh, again, we're, the response isn't just for surface oil. Uh, so if it were leaking X thousand barrels of oil a day, but that was only half of that was getting to the surface, doesn't mean that we don't still have a problem that has to be dealt with inside the water column um, at uh, a whole bunch of different depths. So I'm not entirely sure that uh, uh, the scenario of hiding it would necessarily be uh, be accomplished. Barbara Boxer says there's been a cover up on the amount of oil coming out and uh, seems to be suggesting that government agencies are involved with BP. And well, I, that's uh, the notion of a cover up is ridiculous. Yep. Who's in charge of this cleanup? Is it BP or is it the federal government overseeing and directing as BP is said? responsible for. Uh, BP is responsible for uh, and will be paying the bill for the cleanup. The cleanup is obviously overseen by a whole host of federal agencies. Well, Understand, like, well, let, let me let's explain this. That, I think that's well, let's, uh, let me unpack it a little bit. Remember that the drilling decisions that are made uh, are made by uh, uh, now a collection of bureaus that uh, used to comprise MMS in the Department of Interior. The Coast Guard is part of the Department of Homeland Security, which is overseeing part of that response. Once oil hits land, the Environmental Protection Agency uh, would take over, as well as monitoring the air and water. How do we stop the leak? Who's in charge of that, those uh, ideas? BP uh, with our oversight. Okay, are you confident in BP since you've entrusted this great task to it? It's not, the, the law entrusted this great, great task of it, Savannah, but, I, I, but judging by the implication of your question, there's not uh, the best and brightest minds in all of this government and in the scientific community uh, and in the world of, um, of commerce are, are focused on this problem. Everything that can be done is being done. We have, as I said a minute ago, um, an unprecedented catastrophe. Uh, we have a well that is leaking some amount of oil 5,000 feet below the surface. The technical equipment to deal with that type of activity is not possessed by the federal government. The Department of Defense does not have uh, a submersible that can reach 5,000 feet with the mechanical arm power to uh, do the types of things that uh, BP and other oil companies buy equipment to do. So you're kind of in this arranged marriage with BP on the cleanup. Uh, I, 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 that seems like a strained analogy. Again, I would simply say uh, what I think I've said throughout this process, they are responsible. Uh, they will get the bill. The taxpayers won't. Uh, and it's being overseen by, as I just unpacked for you, many elements of the federal government. And last thing on the SESTAC thing, um, so what you said in March was you knew you were aware of the facts and there was nothing problematic there. So but here you won't confirm or deny, but that statement, just leaving it there, seems to tacitly acknowledge that something I'm, had I'm, been offered. I'm not going to unpack uh, any more of that statement that I made. Okay, so but if the impression is left that there was something, I mean, you're comfortable with that. You want to clear that up. I would just refer to you what I said in March. Right. Yes, sir. Going back to uh, North Korea, Robert. Uh, You've used this isolated formulation before, and you're mm -hmm. part of a long list of spokespeople for various administrations that have used it. Do you really think the North Koreans care uh, <laughs> about this? It's had no effect on them for decades. Uh, said that they're I isolated. don't think it's had. I, I think to say that it's had no effect on them, um, uh, if you uh, if you look at uh, their people, I think that's not. Uh, I don't think that's the case. I think when you have. Uh, people that can't get enough to eat is it has most assuredly affected so your ability. Uh, no, uh, but we have sanctions uh, chip uh, on the North Koreans, which, if you have rational leadership, generally lead to uh, well, a change leaders, in service. The leaders that, who call the shots, uh, Kim, he doesn't care about this. Uh, I, I, based on I, the, I, I can't, on this I, I can't be a spokesperson for or well, based on get in you, the mind of based on what you the describe leader as an North unacceptable Korea. behavior. This has been the same behavior that uh, has a long track record. I, I, it hasn't become any more acceptable. I can confirm that. Yes? Um, I'm, I'm 
Korea, there's been a suggestion that the U.S. should put North Korea back on the list of uh, countries. Sponsored there's a process that is done at the State Department for that, uh, and uh, I would point you over to them uh, on the criteria to do so. Awesome. Not asking you to comment on the day-to-day -day fluctuations of the stock market, but, but. <laughs> um, there's a lot. What of about the day-to-day -day fluctuations of the stock? Market? Well, the Dow has been yeah. down by as much as around 350 points. Today. Right. There's a lot of uncertainty. Initial jobless claims report, Europe, yeah. also um, yeah. reg reform. You know, what can the administration do to infuse some certainty into the marketplace? Well. Um, I'm going to be careful not to uh, break my admonition of commenting on uh, what happens on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, <clears throat> let me take individually, for instance, um, we, we, we saw a weekly increase in the number of um, jobless claims. Um, it is, I think it is safe to say that those are numbers that, based on seasonality, uh, have a tendency to jump around. We saw an increase particularly in claims from two states that had uh, experienced some severe weather, including Tennessee recently. Uh, I think the four-week average for those claims was down, which uh, generally uh, is also a number that looked at, looked at in order to smooth out um, some of those seasonal fluctuations. Um, I, I think you've heard others in the administration discuss continuing to uh, take the steps that need to be taken to uh, put the economy on a firmer foundation. The uh, a committee passed out the president's uh, small business lending initiative um, in order to move more credit to small businesses. Uh, other committees have worked through. Uh, things like our retrofitting proposal, and the president still believes uh, those are necessary actions. We've got uh, Europe is having to deal with the problems uh, within uh, within Europe, uh, and we continue to believe those are some tough steps that are going to have to be taken. In terms of financial reform, um, uh, you know, the president and the team here have a strong belief that we have to have some very tough rules going forward, that the type of activity that led to what happened in starting in 2007 and in, throughout 2008 can't continue to happen. Uh, I actually think that provides some certainty, uh, not just to the market, but to investors and taxpayers uh, that they're no longer going to be on the hook for the risky decisions of uh, a very few at a very few large banks. As long as uh, there is a movement, <clears throat> That provides uncertainty. Well, I, I think we are. Uh, I think we are coming to the conclusion of the Senate process, uh, and I ventured to guess uh, earlier in the week that, that we'd have something on the president's desk in the very near future. Major. A couple policy things. Uh, the extenders agreement that uh, Congressman Levin and Senator Bach has announced this morning. Are you familiar with it? Does the administration have a position in favor uh, of it? I, I will check with legislative affairs. I, I have heard some talk about it, but not an in-depth. You don't have a position. Uh, not that I'm aware of, but I will ask them. Okay. Uh, Governor Jindal has been appealing to uh, the Army Corps of Engineers <laughs> to expedite consideration of his request that he be allowed and others be allowed to build these barriers. Yeah. All these berms to protect. Yeah. Can you describe to the degree that's been briefed here uh, where that process is, and is the administration yeah. sympathetic to that request? Well, it's a good idea. Uh, let me check specifically with. Uh, I don't know. I assume that falls under the purview of EPA. Um, every day, uh, there is a call that happens with the five Gulf state governors uh, to go through uh, what is happening on the ground. Uh, the actions that we're taking to deal with the response, uh, both from an environmental and an economic, um, in, both environmental and economic impacts. Uh, I know that uh, uh, when you say has it been briefed here, I know that Governor Jindal has mentioned that uh, on one of those calls. Uh, I will check with EPA on where that is. Okay. The President, in his Friday comments about this bill, talked about the uh, quantities of dispersants deployed. He wasn't favorable or negative, but he did quantify that as part of the federal response. Has there been data that the White House and EPA has received in the last 24 to 48 hours that has raised significant concerns 
about toxicity issues, or is it just the amount that they're beginning to wonder about? Uh, again, or, this or is the original uh, toxicity of what was being applied in the first place. We continue to do testing. Uh, I'm not aware of any testing that has um, uh, that has shifted the focus to, to a different dispersant. Uh, our viewpoint is, given the sheer magnitude of what we're facing, and, and our reliance on both at a surface and a subsea level on those dispersants, uh, that as a matter of practice at this point, using the least toxic uh, is the most optimal. Can you in any way quantify this event in South Korea in the history since the armistice? It, 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 by my calculation, the largest loss of South Korean life mm -hmm. since the war was ended and the armistice was agreed to. You said in the remarks last night that you would, the administration supports the South Koreans' attempts to obtain justice for the loss of these 46 South Korean sailors. First of all, can you give the American people a sense of the magnitude, the gravity of this event, and what you mean by obtaining justice for the loss of those 46 well, South Korean sailors? Uh, on the second part, uh, again, we're in close consultation with That's the South Koreans. South Koreans. Well, we're uh, in consultation with us, but this is, uh, uh, this is something that uh, uh, obviously, we have, as I said earlier, we have a, a very strong relationship um, and are committed to uh, committed to their defense. Uh, but I believe the South Koreans will be addressing the second part of that. Uh, look, in terms of the magnitude of this, I mean, um, I, I'm not a historian to go back through Korean relations, but again, I, I think if um, I, I think the notion of uh, a military event between two countries that has caused uh, this type of loss of life is uh, uh, is extremely troubling and is uh, is a deeply significant event uh, in the history of those uh, those two countries. A couple of things on politics. Will the president uh, raise money for Barbara Boxer next week in California? Uh, I think that is on the schedule. Yes. Okay. <coughs> and uh, does the administration view Tim Burns as a Obama Democrat or someone who now that he'll be in the House can advance the Obama agenda? And if so, how? Tim I'm Burns? Sorry, I'm sorry, Mark Chris. I was going to say. I, uh, I transposed the name. Mark Chris. I, uh, you didn't transpose the name. You <laughs> I mean, you get the, uh, I, I, I think, uh, uh, I'll say this, Major, about the elections that we watched on Tuesday. Um, I've said here many times that I doubt there are many in Congress that agree with each and everything that the President agrees on. Um, we have the luxury of enjoying a party with a big tent. Uh, I think that was proven in Pennsylvania 12 by somebody who, while doesn't agree with every one of the policy decisions uh, or policy proposals of this administration, there are common values that we enjoy as members of the same party. I think if you look at the events that have transpired in the Republican Party over the last Let's go back 13 months. Arl Inspector was running in a Democratic primary largely because he was run out of his own, his own party. Right? Charlie Crist went from 18 months ago being on the very short list of a Republican vice president to being run out of his own party. And a Republican senator from Utah that was elected six years ago with 70 percent of the vote finishes third, receiving slightly more than a quarter of the convention vote to be renominated. Uh, I think if you look at, um, I think if you look at the direction that both parties are going, uh, we are happy to enjoy uh, a large tent with uh, common values but diverse viewpoints. Uh, I think the Republican Party is uh, is having a um, is having an internal battle with themselves, and they're shrinking the size of their party. Can you name the most significant issue where the president, and Mr. Pritz, agreed? Uh, strengthening the economy. Hey, Robert. Um, <coughs> uh, looks like there's going to be a cl another cloture vote tonight on financial regulation. Maybe, you know, they, they, then they could move very quickly if that happens oh, to a final <coughs> passage. Um, could you talk about how significant the administration, assuming that happens when that happens, how significant the administration sees that in the context of your achievement? Mm -hmm. And and it, yeah, obviously there's some more, you know, you got to deal with the House and you know, getting them together. But at some point, do, yeah. you say, do you go out and sell this thing to the American public? It plays a big part in the elections this fall. Talk a little bit about Well, look, I, I think it is, uh, I think, um, as you mentioned, Mike, the, when we get, uh, when, when, when closure is invoked, we'll be, uh, we'll be past a very big step toward final passage. 
uh, as I said earlier, I think you have um, you have two very good proposals on the House and Senate side. We will uh, we will have to mesh those two proposals, but you are going to have very strong rules of the road. Uh, the Senate bill includes uh, bringing derivatives out of the shadows uh, and regulating them. Uh, it includes both sides include very strong consumer protections, which in many ways is where middle class families interact with the financial system. Uh, getting a, getting a, a, an auto loan, uh, getting a college loan, getting a credit card. So that's an enormously significant thing. Uh, the Volcker Rule, which limits the size and the scope of uh, the activities that a bank can be involved in. You know, I've, I've been asked a couple of times whether, you know, why, why, is, why is the President talking about financial reform? Why isn't he talking about the economy? Well, uh, the lack of the lack of a set of strong rules is a big reason for why we're why we have uh, experienced the economic downturn over the uh, past several years that we have, and uh, putting rules in place that prevent that type of risky behavior from impacting the economy to the degree it has uh, is a, a jobs issue and an economics issue. I think it will play a very big role uh, in what the president talks about over the next several weeks. And I, I have no doubt that voters will have very clear decisions that they'll get to make in November about whether you supported, um, uh, whether you, sub whether you supported um, ensuring that the taxpayers never got the bill again for the risky decisions of Wall Street or whether you supported the risky decisions of Wall Street. I think those are the, the votes that people will uh, get a chance to make. Is there any concern that the thing is very complicated just because it deals with well, it is, it, complicated Again, I think financials. it is. I don't doubt that it is enormously complicated. I will say, as I said a minute ago, and the reason I talked about the consumer financial protection uh, provisions, because again, this is, in many ways, this is where people intersect with, uh, with the financial system. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I, I hazard to guess many of us don't deal in derivatives. <laughs> so, uh, Peter, <laughs> but just a little on the side. Um, so again, I, I, again, I think where you deal with the financial system, with a credit card, with, uh, with a, a, a loan to buy a car, to buy a house, to finance an education, the type of protections that are there those are tremendously significant based on the fact that that's that intersection that happened. Robert, uh, I would ask you about derivatives, but I have to be able to find it. Um, Dr. Abdullah, the former Afghan foreign minister and presidential candidate, is here in town uh, just a week after President Karzai was here, but nobody from the administration will see him. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about why that would be. Uh, I, I will check with NSC on that. I, I don't know the answer to that uh, right up here. Uh, well, then that leads into my second question, which is that um, on Monday, our last chance with you, um, there were 10 questions you said that you would check with somebody on and get back to us on, and I'm wondering if you've had a chance to... Uh, do I don't it believe it was 10, but I'll go... I got uh, a list. Uh, what, what are they? <laughs> well, what's what's uh, one? One was, uh, has the president read the Arizona law? You said you would... No, I said he... Uh, I said... Uh, it, he'd ask for information about I that. said he'd ask for information about that. Uh, he did at, at, in a meeting that we had before that, and he has read the law, yes. Yeah, the law, okay. All right, so that's nine. Uh, the Glass-Steagall amendment you were going to... Uh, Glass-Steagall is... Uh, uh, the administration strongly believes that um, the Volcker rule that limits the size and the scope uh, of banks uh, fully addresses um, what needs to happen in that area of financial reform. So you don't need to reimpose the Glass-Steagall because the Volcker rule will take care of it? Yes. Okay. You're really going to give him 11 questions? No, I'm, I'm still going He's to following up on your behalf, Mike. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. April, April, April asked a very question today about who met with whom when it came to the uh, civil rights groups and Elena Kagan. Yeah, I, I, I asked Josh to follow up on that, but I'll follow up with Josh on following up with you. Thank you, Peter. All right. Uh, the question about uh, this is great. Can you do this every day? Yeah. Yeah. No good uh, Halliburton contract? Uh, I'd see our friend wasn't here to hasn't isn't here to illuminate us on the meaning of his question, but uh, I, since I haven't gotten the follow-up question on what his original question meant, I do not have an answer for the question he lacked a premise on. All right, I think it was Wendell who asked about the BP, uh, the Center for Public Integrity report uh, suggesting that BP uh, was it two two BP refineries were responsible for more than ninety percent of the flavored violations. You said you would check on it. Uh, I, that I have not checked on. Okay. Sorry, you'll take that. All right. 
uh, the uh, West Point speech you were going to look at, see if you could give us any more about. Uh, uh, the, and I was going to ask about that. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the, 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 well, I don't know You're if this counts as one of yours, but uh, <laughs> no, the, the, the president's received, uh, is in the process of that. There's a draft of that, but I don't have anything additional for that. I'll let it go with this one, but I asked it on Monday about whether Karzai had might had asked for a change in the timetable on the operations or yeah, uh, I, not that I'm aware of. I will uh, again. Uh, you would well, I think you'd started your question out by saying that the your, your, it was your understanding that the operation, the beginning of the operation in that had been delayed. No, no. There's a report that says some aspects, some of the military operations, not the whole thing. Okay. I, did you there. ask it that? Did you ask it as some aspects or the whole thing? I I read it directly. Well, yeah, how about you do this? You go check on that, and I'll go yeah, check on that. Right do you? What, what's the question? Huh? Uh, the, <laughs> I'd have to search for it. This is this iPad. Okay, we the McClatchy report was. He brought his iPad in. Well, that's <laughs> well, some of the uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the military operations were going to be postponed to a fall, and the question was whether that was that something that President Karzai had. Requested? Right. That, that was your question, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the you buried the lead. Yeah. Uh, again, I, I I want to see the phrasing. I believe you asked the. I will check on whether Carlos had. I believe I, I thought the answer. I thought the question had premised, had the entire operation been moved. But maybe I misunderstood. Can you look me uh, into our editors would be interested in the Are you now uh, piling on to Peter's question? Yes, that I think is eight. Do you have two more? Actually, uh, you were giving us uh, <laughs> information about the MMS official who uh, stepped down and said you hadn't. Uh, Chris Owens. I, I would. Uh, I will be happy to. I, I think that was extensively covered in the newspaper. No, I know, but you were give us your response uh, to whether I, or not this was. Uh, this was a a, pers a personal personnel decision that uh, uh, I understand that he made. Okay, and then the last. Which again, was, I think most of you wrote about. But uh, the, yeah, but the Federal Reserve TV. Bank of New York. Well, I, 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 I apologize. Federal Reserve Bank of New York said the recovery was slowing and you were going to look into that. Uh, I have not read the Federal Reserve's New York report on economic slowdown, but uh, I'll print a copy and we can, we'll share that. So the yes, doesn't have to do this every day. Is there any way we could have like an organized system where there's like a list of the questions that, you say you check on? And no, that seemed no, horribly no. organized. I, 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 uh, I love that. Well, right. Previous I love that. administrations yeah. would actually post responses for everyone. I understand. To so, Go ahead. Well, um, maybe, could we do that? Could we request that? Uh, we could. Go ahead. <laughs> we'll get back to your, is there any reaction to the Salahis being stopped? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. No, this one is, uh, you know, um, look, I, I, I heard about this last evening. Um, uh, I shook my head. Um, once again, the Salahis were not on the guest list. Uh, at some point, that would provide a hint um, as to the degree to which you should show up. Uh, were, they, were they trying to get in? I, I, I have no information that they were trying to get in. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, I think the service has talked about uh, stopping a car that had been uh, seen uh, repeatedly in the area. I, uh, I'm serious. You made a joke about him, but you know. Well, if every time somebody makes a joke about somebody, they take it that personally, I don't. Uh, uh, I, I don't think, uh, I, I, I don't know whether you made him feel uncomfortable, April. He hasn't invited them to come to the White House. I don't know if that's a level of discomfort that would chagrin them from attempting to come here. Uh, I am reminded that uh, it seems to me like their 15 minutes of fame were up almost six months ago. Yes, sir. Some uh, in Congress say it's inappropriate for a foreign leader to come to the White House and to the chamber of the U.S. House of Representatives and criticize American law, American state law, and the Second Amendment to the Constitution. Was there anything inappropriate in what President Calderon uh, raised yesterday about both the Arizona law and, well, uh, and I, the guns? You know, I, I can't speak for, I, I don't know, when you say some people, I, I don't know. Um, Several members of Congress have yeah. issued statements today saying his comments were inappropriate. Well, I, 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 he's on Capitol Hill, and I think they could take it up directly with him. Well, he said it there, too. Yeah. That's why they issued the statement. Well, they, they, uh, it seems to have not worked. Um, I, you know, and I would say that uh, uh, he has viewpoints on, on issues. Some of those, uh, as you heard yesterday, relating to the Arizona law are shared by the president. Um, uh, even as we... Uh, 
all have to be mindful of and take steps to implement uh, <coughs> comprehensive immigration reform. President feel that um, emigrate, or did Mrs. Obama tell the president all about her encounter with a school uh, student yesterday? Not that I'm, I, I, I don't know the answer to that, to be honest with you. Yep. Robert, speaking of uh, President Calderon this morning in his address to Congress, he uh, asked lawmakers to reinstate the assault weapons ban, something the president has supported in the past. Does the president still support that, and does he plan to lean on Congress to, uh, to make I, progress? I, I would, I would, uh, because the president largely got asked this question uh, yesterday about uh, uh, both drugs and weapons moving across the border, I'd point you to the answer that he gave about uh, increased inspections uh, uh, on uh, cargo that's moving uh, from the north to the south. And can I just Chris. really quick, just following a while ago, I asked if he's <laughs> expressed, hey, no, he, he, I, he took care of my other follow but I have one more about if, right. if he's expressed any opinion at all yet, obviously the boycott is growing, people are joining, does the president have any opinion? He opposes the, the immigration law. Does he support the boycott? Uh, I, uh, I, again, I think he's been pretty clear about the law. I think he uh, um, uh, thinks that the effects of it uh, are potentially quite harmful for uh, many in this country. Uh, I have not heard him speak specifically about that except to uh, um, laud uh, during, the Cinco, during his Cinco de Mayo remarks, uh, the Phoenix Suns for the jerseys that they wore during that game. Kristen. Uh, two things. On the proposal from the Iranians this week, is, mm -hmm. it the, is it your view that this slows up the drive towards sanctions? I know that you guys are proceeding, but do you think there needs to be a pause to weigh the Iranian proposal before going forward? No. I, I, you know, again, we, uh, uh, I, I think Susan Rice outlined a consensus uh, proposal um, that the P5 plus one have worked on for many months uh, after uh, the uh, agreement and proposal that was discussed by the Iranians, the Turks, and the Brazilians. Um, I think it's important to understand that the proposal that uh, Iran says they've entered into now is less than what they agreed to eight months ago. They did not agree to, um, as they had in October, sit down with the P5 plus one to uh, have a broader, fuller discussion about Iran's nuclear program. They have not agreed to provide unfettered access to uh, nuclear facilities such as Cone. And uh, the proposal does not address in any form, the increased enrichment that Iran said it was undertaking in order to uh, provide material for their research reactor. So while we acknowledge and appreciate the efforts of the Turks and the Brazilians, I think it is important to understand that that agreement alone does not address, uh, or that proposal alone in its limited form does not fully address all of the concerns that the P5 plus one and the larger international community have with Iran's nuclear program. Uh, and again, I'd point to the things that Iran agreed to eight months ago that are left out of this proposal. Is there an effort afoot to get them to expand the parameters of their proposal? For instance, uh, did that come up in the president's conversation with Prime Minister Erdogan? Uh, I, I have, uh, uh, I will check on the uh, whether that came up with uh, with uh, Prime Minister Erdogan or not. Um, uh, again, uh, there are there are responsibilities that the Iranians have and that they must undertake. Uh, while the proposal that was outlined on Monday would be a would be a step in the right direction because of the amount of low enriched uranium that would be transferred. Again, assuming that the Iranians kept up their end of the deal, which has not, has almost never been the case. Uh, we have had eight months of progression. That progression has included increased enrichment, uh, and the proposal, again, fails to live up to even what they wanted to do just eight months Is ago. Is there any point, then, in getting the Turks and the Brazilians to try to press for some changes in the... Well, look, I, again, I think the, the role that they... Um, uh, Again, I would again acknowledge the role that they played uh, in 
uh, in trying to get Iran to live up to its obligations. Uh, I think the international community, by releasing the consensus uh, of the P5 plus one after that, understands that the international community understands that there's more that has to be done. Robert. Thanks, 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 Robert. Yeah, come on. Um, Earlier in the briefing and talking about the oil spill, you had said uh, about the volume of the spill, you had said there are certainly many reasons to find out the degree to which that is happening. Yeah. Um, could you spell out what sort of the top, I don't know, three or four reasons to want to know that is? And then also, is the administration firmly committed to coming up once I, and you want to stop it, Mr. Party? Are you committed? Let me, to let me up say this, Morgan. I, I want to. I will double check this because I want to make sure that that I, I'm clear in understanding uh, a portion of the Oil Pollution Act of 1990. And that is that there, I, if, if I'm not mistaken, there are some penalties that are derived from the amount. Um, so, uh, but I, I want to make sure that, that, that what I've heard is in that way correct. Um, again, we've got uh, scientists that are working on evaluating, testing, and studying a whole host of issues from subsea oil to loop current to flow. Uh, I guess my main answer was that the, our response efforts have not been predicated on a different flow uh, right. or on a magnitude of, uh, of that flow. But once uh, the priority is to stop it, and yes. everybody agrees that's the right priority, is the administration committed, though, at the end to coming up with an official sort of final number? And, and are you Margaret, concerned I, I, at all again, I, I think that to some degree I, I, I would ask, I'll ask a scientist whether that is whether that's attainable. I mean, I'll be honest with that, you. That's my question right. is, I, I don't, once it's out, can you go back and figure out how much came out? I doubt it. Uh, I doubt with, I mean, I don't know what the margin of error would be. I mean, again, one of the reasons that we know, one of the reasons that, w that you can predicate a question on the degree to which, or, or on the amount of oil that the Valdez um, spilled was because you had in a container, in a ship, uh, a defined amount. Uh, you have, again, a, uh, uh, several leaks coming from, uh, uh, from a, a structure and a pipe 5,000 feet below the surface. And as, as I think Thad Allen has said again, even the video that we see is two-dimensional. Um, there's not, there's, you know, there's, there, when you're seeing it on the screen, there's, there's a depth that you would need, I assume, to make that measurement that is not completely apparent at first blush. So is, I'm sorry to keep going, but even though it's not the priority, it seems like it is increasingly a priority. What are well, I think at some point you'll have, again, no, no, I don't think anything's changing. I, I think this is part of the response. Again, I, I just, without having the, the scientific background, I, again, I just don't know whether, I don't know the degree to which um, and with what accuracy you could come up with um, what that number is. I mean, in all honesty, I think if you go back and look at over a several week period since the spill has happened, I've seen estimates, and I think you largely from reporting, that have ranged uh, each day by tens of thousands of barrels. So, again, I, I think part of it would be you know, the degree to which, you know, how, how, how accurate and how specific can you get? And I just don't know the answer. Probably. April. Um, on the BP oil spill, um, and, and, and going to this last question, the, the sentiment out in the public is if this thing was built, why can't it be prepared? And what can, in an expeditious manner, and why isn't the government right. acting in an expeditious manner to even go into pro to the private sector to help rectify this issue? No, no, no. A April, the private sector is, uh, again, BP is a, 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 an active member of the private sector and is working uh, in conjunction, as I understand it, with many different oil companies. I'm not talking, they're not, the people that are talking are not talking about just BP, not the people who are involved, the people beyond that. There are other ocean, ocean, uh, ocean, type persons, a marine type person, whatever. <laughs> Oceanographic, I guess, whatever. Okay? Okay, whatever. So, um... <laughs> Um, I'm, 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 the decision I'm contemplating in my head is to asking you to be more specific as to said oceanographic okay, people. Okay, yes. Because I don't, and I don't, I'm not okay, trying to be okay, flip, okay. I'm just trying to figure out, 
I mean, are you talking, there's a, there's a scientific element to... That's the point. Okay, there's, people yeah. who have mechanisms to go down to be able to repair uh, equipment, well, well, machinery be, as well. No, no, let's be clear. I, I am being very clear with no, no. machinery as well yeah. as I mean, paws. April, but are, are you asking me, or are you telling me that there is a, there, there are a series a, of machines that... No, I'm not trying to be flip here, but it just the, the predicate of your question is that there are, hold on, that there are a series of machines that exist that have not been um, deployed in order to deal with this what's happening 5,000 feet there. below. This is the question that's out there. People are wondering if this thing could have been built that far down, it was built some kind of way, and there are uh, machines and, and equipment from other... in a catastrophic uh, way. Right, but there are machines out there and other... Uh, Marine I just, I just, technology, I don't, I don't private to, sector organizations that can I want to be careful here, April. I, I want to be careful this because can, can I just for a second? Okay. Again, I want to, I want to ask you, you. You're predicating your question on, and I'm happy to look at whatever you have about the notion that there are a series of people or machines that could solve this that are somehow not being asked or used to solve that's this. My, that's my question that I'm asking that we are getting. That people are saying, if this was built, if this could be built, and you could have siphoning of oil out of a well, as you're saying, four miles down, and then the actual equipment is a mile down, why not, how can you not tap other resources out there, marine uh, technology resources, to possibly help fix the problem? Well, not just deal again, with BP I, I, and Halliburton Group, Deal with other people, tap no, no, no. other organizations. I, let me first, I'd point you to BP to get you a list of the people and, and entities that we're, they're working in conjunction with um, in, order to, uh, in order to plug the hole. But understand that. But that's, the, that's where everybody's coming. Do you actually trust? BP. You're talking about you go well, to BP, I don't go think to they BP, have, I don't think not do I, I do not think it is in their business model to continue to have the leak that they're having in the Gulf. Okay, no. Uh, I, I think that uh, I'm under the, the strong impression that they have asked um, companies throughout the world that deal with these type of situations for technological and brain power expertise in order to deal with this because, I mean, I think, let me, the larger point that I would make, April, is the, the, the equipment that is, the equipment that's used to look at and deal with what is going on a mile beneath the surface, that's equipment that is owned and possessed by those companies that have an expertise in that. There is not a, there's not a federal government division of, that has as I said earlier, uh, a submersible at 5,000 feet with the mechanical ability to lift um, many tons of... But again, you, you just tapped on in your answer basically the issue of trust with, with BP. They're not giving out information on the video. Why totally rely on them instead of going out to some other private sector organizations yeah. that, to possibly get some help? We're, we're going in a circle here, April, but I, I, I got to say... Hold on one second. Let me just finish this. I do not believe that there is an entity in, uh, in this country uh, or, quite frankly, outside of this country that hasn't been um, looked at or tapped into uh, in order to try to make progress on this. Uh, it just, uh, it, it, there is nobody that believes that what is going on, continuing to happen, is in anybody's best interest. Therefore, everybody is trying to uh, seek a solution. What about the Woods Hole Center that found the Titanic? <coughs> uh, again, April, I, I, I'm, I'm way out of my proverbial depth. Uh, locating, uh, locating a ship resting on the floor of the ocean for many decades is somewhat different than um, finding a submersible to get to that depth and plugging many leaks in a riser pipe and in a blowout preventer. If it, was, if it was just about pictures, if it was just about taking pictures, we've done that. Uh, I, this is, uh, I, I hate to, well, I'm not simplifying it because I, I, I'm and not a- And follow yeah. up, um, I asked you something a couple of times on the <laughs> issue. Yes. On the cost, the cost of jobs. Has the president um, been working with people about you know, the jobs that are lost down there, the fisheries that are affected, um, also on the cost of gasoline, as well as um, the well, issue of Well, again, th the this, is, 
this is, as I've said before, this was not production oil. This was exploratory drilling. Um, so the oil lost is not lost in a marketplace uh, that expected a certain amount of deliverable oil on a schedule. Uh, so uh, look, I, I think gas prices go up normally this time of year as there's blend switching and increased demand for driving. So uh, in terms of jobs, uh, SBA has been on the ground for now at least a couple of weeks um, as NOAA first closed a portion of the Gulf and has now expanded the closing of the portion of the Gulf to commercial fishermen. Um, and uh, and I, that I think expands um, throughout the Gulf in order to deal with legitimate claims for, um, for economic loss or damage. Robert, Robert uh, just two quick questions. Does the president still support Blanche Lincoln uh, in her runoff yes. against Halter? And does he plan to do anything uh, in terms of fundraising or cutting ads? I, uh, I don't know that we've been asked to do anything about the campaign. And, and the, the lesson of uh, a lot of people speculated on the lessons of the, of the Specter loss. Uh, do you think that's a signal to, to the president uh, that he might in the future want to support a candidate who more closely represents the base of the party like Sestak rather than uh, a candidate of Again, uh, when we, we uh, Senator Specter was, uh, uh, Senator Specter made a series of uh, important and courageous votes on economic recovery and on health care that the president was uh, enormously thankful for. He was, because of his switch, a member of uh, an incumbent senator and a member of the Democratic Party, and, and, uh, uh, and he enjoyed our support. Uh, the president traveled there and raised money for him. Uh, Vice President Biden traveled there uh, a number of times as well. Has he, um, he has. Um, could uh, you just sort of I, I, I think it was, uh, uh, he left him a message, I believe, on election night. I think they connected today. Um, I will try to get a readout uh, of that. I think it happened not long before I came out here. Um, but again, then I don't, I don't think I'm going out way out on a limb to say this is a this is an anti-incumbent year, and Senator Specter had spent 29 years in one party and switched parties, and was running in, uh, running in the Democratic Party in a in a an extremely tough year for any incumbent. Um, I will say this, uh, as I said earlier, I think the what happened with the, what has happened with the Republican Party and is the evidence you see in somebody like Arlen Specter. They are not even welcome in the party in which they've been serving for 29 years. I miss you over here. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, can you please uh, elaborate a little bit on what John Brennan said about Hezbollah of Lebanon, that uh, the administration is trying to build some moderate elements within the party that well, is let me get by. Let me get something from John on that and not... Uh, George, I think it's your birthday, so let me... Um, <laughs> Let me uh, oh. uh, Well, I have 12 questions. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you are, Peter Baker? <laughs> I'm joking. I will say this. Can I just point out for the record that since Peter asked his 12 questions, he and Mike have been playing with that iPod virtually continuously <laughs> since that point. So I, I hate to bust him like that. On front, yes, I, the, uh, the, uh, the, I, I, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to Google that when I get back. Go ahead, Drew. Uh, Mexican officials are privately very uh, frustrated that the, no matter how many times they bring up the trucking issue with President Obama, they don't see any movement toward the United States honoring its treaty obligations there. Is, do you under, is that frustration? Uh, Understandable. Yeah. Let me, uh, and was any progress made? At let me uh, let me get NEC. I, I will get NEC to get something on uh, uh, on that. I know obviously that it came up as a res uh, as part of um, the two delegations in the Oval Office. Uh, I know that it's been uh, something that's been discussed around here. So let me get some uh, some greater clarity on that. I'll go with Mike and then I'll go back to work. The president made very clear yesterday that he supports President Calderon's efforts in, in the war against narco traffickers. When it comes to Afghanistan, he's talked a lot about reevaluating things as as time goes on, looking at metrics, look, re-looking at strategies. 
the metrics in Mexico are not very good, and they haven't been very good for a while. Is this something that's sort of set in stone, or is there an active process at all in looking at whether their strategy or whether they're whether whether we support their strategy, or whether there's possibly a better strategy or another strategy to deal with uh, these issues? I I do not believe, uh, and I will again I'll check with our uh, uh, with our Mexico guys whether or not. Um, uh, a, a discussion of changing that strategy was part of these discussions. Uh, you know, obviously, um, uh, what, as you heard the president say, what President Calderon has uh, has done has uh, been courageous, and at, at the risk of uh, um, the risk of safety and and his own political standing, uh, has not been easy to undertake. Um, I don't. I, I, let me talk to them and see if there's uh, anything that came up throughout those discussions. Thank Thanks, guys. Quick thing on the Rand Paul. I have not. Uh, I, I have not. Wa I saw clips of the interview. I've not watched the whole thing. Um, I, uh, I. I think I would go back to the answer I gave a little bit ago in terms of the narrowness of or the expansiveness of which, uh, of the party. I, I think. Um, the issues that uh, the issues that many um, fought for uh, in the 50s and the 60s uh, were settled a long time ago in landmark legislation, uh, and a discussion about uh, whether or not you support those um, I don't think has a, a real shouldn't have a place in our political dialogue in in, uh, in 2010. Thanks.